Right, so uh, we do have at least one person on um, from the public, so we will go through the presentation. I'll try and get through it relatively quickly to split to get through, uh, and then we'll open it up for any comments. If you just put your comments or questions in the Q&A, and we can answer them as best as possible. I guess one of the things to highlight right at the start is this is a government process, government proposal, uh, and what we're doing is facilitating a conversation, hopefully providing an opportunity for people to ask a few questions, um, and we'll answer as best as we can from our perspective, and, and also to provide your feedback on um, what's been proposed by the government. So we're seeking the public's views. We will convey them to the government via our submission, as well as making our own submission uh, on behalf of the council generally. So we'll cover um, briefly what the Three Waters Reform is, background and context, the case that the government's put up for change, the proposal itself, and what does it mean for Tasman? So what is Three Waters? Um, probably most of you on this call already know this. So it is drinking water, wastewater, and stormwater, and how they're going to be delivered in the future. So the wider government reform program, a bit of context and background, there is a lot going on uh, in government reform space. Three Waters Reform is one of the early ones a long way down the track already. Uh, this is the first piece of legislation. Uh, however, there's been a lot of work in the background and some key government decisions along the way. Resource management reform is also a reasonable way down the track. Uh, and we expect to see legislation in the relatively near future. And there's been some exposure drafts already over what that might contain. And then there's the local government review, uh, which is uh, considerably uh, earlier in its processes. There's been one report from the local government review um, group, and they're due to report back in another 12 months' time on their next steps. And then it'll be up for the government of the day to decide what to do next. And there's a lot of other smaller reforms going on at the same time, all of which potentially impact on both councils and communities. The driver behind this particular reform, Three Waters, it goes back to the Havelock North drinking water contamination event in 2016. Post that, there was a government inquiry. It had a lot of quite far-reaching recommendations. Uh, and this is one part of the response that central government has made uh, to that event back in 2016. A number of other uh, issues have already been addressed. So the establishment of a new regulator, which covers both drinking water, uh, stormwater and wastewater, was done back in 2020. Uh, the creation of Taumata Arawai, the Water Services Regulator Act, uh, that was followed by the Water Services Act in 2021, which provides the background and detail about exactly what Taumata otherwise role is. And now we've got the Water Services Entities Bill, which is the first bit of legislation that seeks to set in place what is commonly known as the Three Waters Reform. And we can expect to see the Consumer Protection and Economic Regulator Bill, uh, which is the second part of the Three Waters uh, Review, uh, later in 2022. That does make it quite tricky to provide a lot of detailed commentary on the current bill because a lot of the detail that both we and communities wish to see isn't going to be provided until that second bit of legislation. The fundamental basis of this reform is a service delivery model and it re uh, relies on a significant degree of aggregation of community supplies. The bottom line that the government has outlined in its legislative program is public ownership the promotion and protection of Māori interests and concerns, balance sheet separation, and good governance. What we believe is lacking is the taking a community along on a journey uh, and the ability for communities to provide a strong voice in the future uh, as to how these water, water, wastewater, and stormwater supplies are going to be managed, governed, invested in, how much they're going to cost. Council's current role in delivering uh, the services, uh, which we've been doing now for a uh, very long time, is governed by three principal bits of legislation, the Local Government Act 1974, the RMA 1991, and the Water Services Act, which, as I've mentioned earlier, was is a relatively new bit of legislation, um, which, set it, which provides Taumata Arawai with its detailed operating kind of guidelines, and that was created in 2021. Previously, that was done by the Health Department via the Health Act 1956. 
the case that the government set out for change is becoming increasingly challenging to fund and finance large infrastructure investments that are required or are going to be required to meet both drinking water standards, uh, meet and um, continue to meet the RMA consent related discharge standards for wastewater plants particularly, and also an increasing focus in something that we haven't traditionally done, uh, which is the management and treatment of stormwater before it's released into the environment. So increasing environmental and public health standards and regulations are driving a lot of the, what sits behind the case for change. Investments required to adapt to climate change and build resilience to other natural hazards. There is, an, uh, I guess, a, a significant um, shift in terms of the cultural aspects, particularly in terms of wastewater disposal and responding to growth and urban development around the country is another challenge uh, for investment in the future. What's being proposed? So this is what is being proposed in the bill, which is, the, as we mentioned earlier, the first bit of legislation that sets to set in place um, the three waters reforms. So it sets out the arrangements for the four, uh, sets up the new entities. Uh, it is based on an aggregation model. It moves us from 67 authorities to four. Can I take one? Yeah. I think there's a slide missing the chain the entities. Uh, so we move from 67 to four entities, and Tasman currently sits in entity C, uh, which includes 21 other councils and runs from the top of the South Island, including Nelson and Marlborough, uh, right up the lower North Island, including Wellington and as far north as Gisborne and the Bay of Penny. So the plan establishes the entities, sets up the governance arrangements, establishes the accountability framework, clarifies the role of central government, and sets out how the transition is going to operate. The government's belief and proposal is that the entities need to be of the scale that they're suggesting in order to get the operational efficiencies and to borrow more money at better rates to enable it to be easier to afford the future investment required across all three services. Yeah. Uh, so in front of us, the slide that we have is outlining the uh, structure that's being proposed. And I think most people share at least some of the concerns that this is an incredibly complicated model. Uh, it involves an awful lot of moving parts. And it also unfortunately seems to see local customers or consumers uh, right at the very bottom. So there's an awful lot of boxes, arrows and lines which should ab sit above the local customer. Uh, and the council has certainly got some concerns over just how that is going to operate, quite how local customers' voices are going to be heard. Uh, how the governance arrangements are going to work and whether the complexity is going to deliver the efficiencies uh, and the direct ability for consumers, customers, formerly ratepayers, uh, to be able to influence future investment decisions. So in terms of touching on some of those details, the regional um, representative group or the RRG uh, which is made up of a 50-50 split between local authority representatives uh, and representatives of mana whenua. And in NTC, I think the mana whenua numbers are about the same as the local authority numbers. So there's about 21 local councils and a similar number of iwi uh, make up that group. Not all of those people or not all of those groups are going to be able to be represented on uh, the RRG. So it remains to be seen whether somewhere like Tasman or Nelson or Marlborough will have a representative. I think the number that's being indicated is... It's less than that. It's about 10 to 12 um, representatives, representatives. Local, local authorities and 10 to 12 for Mana Whenua. Yeah. So as you can see from those numbers, um, out of 22, there's probably going to be approximately half may have some direct representation. Uh, the role of the regional represent representative group is to uh, appoint a board appointment committee and it's that board appointment committee that ultimately appoints the board of the entity, and they will be the ultimate governors and decision makers, uh, and they will inform management as to those large investment decisions in the future. 
There's a number of processes that will sit around that in terms of the development of a statement of performance expectations, a statement of intent. Uh, EWI will be asked to provide a Tamana O to Y statement, uh, and there's planning and strategic documents that will be produced by the board. In terms of local customers, the key way for them to have their influence is through two ways, i.e. the consumer forum on the left-hand side of the graph, and also through the regional advisory panel. So this is a relatively new inclusion into this structure. Uh, it came through as recommendations from the working party, uh, and that key role uh, is to provide a voice for local customers into the regional representative group. Now, one of the considerations that the council has made in its submission is that that regional advisory panel should have a much more direct relationship with the board of the entity uh, should this reform go ahead, as that is the most direct way that um, customers will be able to influence the decisions that are made on their behalf in their regions. Next slide. So the consumer forum, again, box out to the left. So its fundamental role is to assist with effective and meaningful engagement, um, collate consumer views, assist the water services entity to understand the communities or customers' needs and expectations, and to represent the needs of its diverse um, consumers. So again, it is one of the forums that's being suggested um, to provide that feedback. Again, council submission is likely to make the point uh, that we don't see that as a as necessarily a direct enough um, line of communication and engagement between consumers, customers, and the board. One of the other key points uh, in the government's proposal is the need for balance sheet separation. Um, the need, the necessity for this, is to enable the new entities to achieve a higher credit rating, uh, borrow, and borrow more money and to get lower borrowing rates. So the expectation is that they will receive at least the same or a higher credit rating than local government and a bit able to borrow at the same or lower rates than we can currently. There is a debate about how to borrow more cheaply than the government uh, or local government. And, and so, but it is a fundamental part of the reform that the government believes they need to be entirely separated from their inverted commas owners which remain councils or local government. One of the other key points is the privatisation protections, which are built into this bit of legislation. So any proposal to privatise in the future would need to be endorsed by 75% of that regional representation group. Yep. Uh, there would then need to be a referendum within the entity boundaries and then legislative select committee processes. Uh, I guess as we're learning through this process, however, should a future government decide to just change the law, then they have the potential to bypass any of these uh, sort of um, protections, and hence the council submission is likely to suggest that they need to build something uh, slightly stronger into the actual legislative process rather than rely on the complicated process of RRGs, referendums um, within the entities themselves. What does all this mean for Tasman? Uh, so, so we've currently got 15 water supplies um, supplying uh, the large urban settlements, part of Motueka, all of Richmond, uh, the smaller urban settlements of Wakefield, Brightwater, Mapua, etc., and three rural water supplies. We have seven wastewater treatment plants. We are 50%. Um, I guess operator, owner, shareholder in the Nelson Regional Sewerage Business Unit, which provides wastewater services to Wakefield, Brightwater, uh, Mapua, Richmond, and a significant part of Nelson City Council. And we have 15 stormwater urban drainage areas, and we manage the stormwater for the rest of the district. As you can see, uh, it's a significant part of the overall assets uh, that the council has. So the replacement value of all of the assets under stormwater, wastewater and water supply is approximately $634 million. Uh, it's depreciated replacement value is 442 and the annual amount of depreciation across that scheme across all three of those services is roughly $9 million. So 
So without uh, transfer of three waters assets, uh, the net debt of the council uh, would, under the current 10 year plan, reach approximately $250 million by the 1st of July, 2024. Where annual revenue related uh, to those assets of about $163 million and our debt to revenue ratio is approximately 93% currently and will reach 139% by the end of 2024. Three Waters financial position, uh, the Three Waters debt is approximately $90 million. The Three Waters revenue is $38 million and the debt to revenue ratio is 235. So as you can see, we borrow significantly more money against the assets um, that sit under Three Waters than we do against all the other assets of council. So if Three Waters assets are transferred out of council ownership, the net debt drops to $61 million or $133 million in the end of 2024. Annual revenue uh, with three waters out drops, but not by a significant amount to $124 million, 133 at the end of 2024. And the debt to revenue ratio is obviously actually, ironically, um, enhanced from the position that it is now. Um, and that is because we borrow, as it shows in the middle of that slide, significantly more against these assets than we do against the balance of council's assets. The big selling point uh, from the government, and this has been developed by the Water Industry Commission of Scotland, and this comes from one of their dashboards. All of this information is available on the Department of Internal Affairs website at Three Waters. So there's an awful lot of information out there. This is a very small part of all of that that's available. But this fundamentally is the selling point that the government has put up. Currently, if you're connected to all three services in Tasman, you will be paying approximately $2,290 a year for water, wastewater and stormwater supply. The government's proposition is that should no reform uh, be undertaken and we invest what they believe we need to between now and 2051, that that cost per household will rise to $6,760. What they're also suggest, what they're also, I guess, committing to in one way, shape, or form, is that should the reform go ahead, their expectation is that that figure will be $1,260. I think it's fair to say there is a certain degree of skepticism uh, right around the country as to whether these figures, I think everyone agrees they're not going to be exactly these numbers um, because this is all very predictive and looks a long way forward. But even the proposal that in 2051, you would pay um, almost half what you're paying today, um, given what is needed to be invested around the country and across these four entities in 2051, uh, does seem highly optimistic. And I think the one thing that we're going to, well, certainly the council is going to suggest um, that these figures are probably at the high end of optimism in terms of the efficiencies that can be gained, the investment that needs to be made. Uh, and ultimately what the consumer might expect to pay. But if you are making a submission to the government, you should make it very clear that if this reform goes ahead, that this is what you would expect to see, not this exact number, but this sort of performance out of these new entities, because that is fundamentally the selling point and what is being, I guess, traded off for less input, less influence, uh, and a significantly different structure is a significantly less cost uh, in 2051. So council submission. Uh, council and district council will be making a submission uh, around the process in terms of what we see as the lack of um, community engagement. The fact that we're having to have these have these meetings, make these submissions, um, attempt to get the information out to the public and give them the opportunity to provide feedback via us. I guess highlights the fact that there probably hasn't been that much communication uh, through central government agencies, DIA um, themselves. The governance and accountability structure, so both the complexity of it uh, and the fact that it needs to provide a significantly stronger local voice in a much more direct manner than is currently being suggested for those who will ultimately um, continue to be the people who are liable for the debt and responsible for paying the new entities. Uh, it might not be certainly won't be via councils, 
that'll be direct to those entities in the short to medium and the medium to longer term, but it is still going to be paid for and the responsibility is still going to lie with the people connected to the services. Concern over the breakdown of the water service entities, and I guess uh, that's that's one of the challenges with this, just how they are going to um, deliver the services, how that's going to work. Do we fit an entity C? So initially, when the figures came out, council's position was because of the significantly lower indicative cost in entity C as opposed to entity D, that our preference was um, to stay in entity C, as the government has suggested. However, the degree of scepticism around the figures and the fact that it is likely that over time um, the, all these entities are going to end up probably in a relatively similar position, what I'd expect with the exception of entity A, which includes Auckland, that there are probably uh, a lot more reasons why we might better fit an entity D, i.e. the whole South Island. And one of the key things that has impacted on that thinking is the government and one of its other large reform processes, which is the creation of the disillusionment and replacement of the DHBs, has also come up with a four entity model or a four area model. They are different boundaries to the three waters um, boundaries. And in that case, the South Island is included as one entire entity. And so those two factors, i.e., um, concern over the veracity of the cost structures and the fact that the health boundaries um, see the South Island as a whole uh, is why the council's submission is likely to include a suggestion that um, having thought further about it, Entity D is likely to be a great better fit for us in the long run. So just the last thing before I open it up for feedback and questions. Uh, is the, this webinar, 5th of July, there's a drop-in session in, at the Mortawaka Library on the 7th where councils, council staff will be available for kind of one-on-one -on -one discussion to answer any further questions or provide any further information. We'll consider the feedback that we've received on the 15th and we have to have our submission into the government on the 22nd of July. So just lastly, um, as I said right at the start, this is a government proposal and a government process. We're trying to facilitate um, some further information sharing and an opportunity to, for people to provide their feedback to us that we will pass on alongside our own submission. But we really encourage anyone who is thinking about making a submission to submit directly to the select committee process, um, ask to be heard. We have requested that they have hearings locally, um, but currently those hearings are likely to either be done um, I guess online uh, or in Wellington. So please make a submission directly to the government, either instead of or as well as through to us. So that's the presentation, and I'm happy to try and answer any questions that anyone has. If you pop them up in the Q and A. Yeah, I'm happy to. Yeah. Yeah. Take on participants. So, given the small number of people who have uh, joined us, it's probably if you'd prefer to ask any questions just verbally, if we unmute you or you unmute yourself um, and you just want to ask a question directly, then fire away. Um. Am I unmuted, Tim? You are unmuted, Eleanor. <laughs> um, the whole thing looks like a bloody dog's breakfast, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, your word's not mine, Eleanor, but uh, um, it, it is somewhat complex and challenging to get one's head around, yep. Um, tell me the figures that the government was spouting in their propaganda about how many people are actually were actually ill from drinking bad water. That was a lot of bullshit, wasn't it? Um, uh, 
look, there are a lot of statistics floating around about uh, why people get ill and where the source is from. Um, it's really a question you'd have to ask them. Right. I thought Federated Farmers had said that their um, figures were fairly skewed. Um, but it's... anyway, so basically, submit. I get grumpy about the lack of consultation from the council. You know, you you said, I think that you didn't really want it. I can't remember now. But then everybody was just steamrolled, isn't it? And and that's one of my concerns. Um, I don't, I'm just totally opposed to the whole thing. So that's my view. And thank you for your time this evening explaining it a bit more. Thanks, Eleanor, and thanks for your questions. And no doubt you will put in a submission uh, to central government. So I wish you all the best with that process. Uh, and so, so we can actually ask to be heard on that one then, which I hadn't actually realised. I'm not sure. I would have thought so. normally select committee processes provide the opportunity to be heard, uh, but you would have to check with uh, um, the next yeah select committee. But put in a submission, indicate you wish to be heard in any event. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what the process is. We have asked that they have hearings around the country in the absence of having been around the country to sell it in the, uh, oh, in the first place. So. Well, they have. They had it on TV. <laughs> yeah, they did, yeah, yeah, they certainly did a lot of advertising. <laughs> um, I'm not sure they did a lot of um, community engagement, so to speak. It sort of annoys me that the money that they've spent on trying to sell it um, if they'd given all the councils <laughs> X amount of dollars, it would have gone an awful long way to solving a lot of the problems. Yeah, look, I think I think all these reforms, uh, there is a lot of money spent in the transition and reform process um, and how well spent that, I guess, is an open question. Uh, I guess their, their view is that over the long run, they stand to save um, a lot more than it costs up front, but that's one of the key questions as to whether the actual figures that they're using, the efficiencies that they're suggesting and the future costs which they're proposing people pay, um, how realistic and achievable are they? Yep. Well, thank, Hi. You very, thank you very much for your time, gentlemen. Very Hi, Eleanor. Just before you go, uh, it's Richard Kirby here. Um, there's on the question and answers, uh, Dwayne Fetch, one of our uh, senior staff members, has put up a link for the um, submissions, and you are allowed to, and he also confirmed that you are allowed to be heard. They are um, uh, requesting if you want to be heard, you can be. So uh, that should help as well. Okay, so where do I find that? I'm not very computer literate. Uh, on the Tasman District Council website. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Okay, much appreciated. See Thanks, you. Eleanor. Thanks for your time. Okay, thank you for your time. See you. Bye. 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 Right, are there any further questions either uh, in person or on the Q&A? If not... Uh, so the drop-in session tomorrow at... Um, Thursday. Thursday, sorry. 4 o'clock, 4.30. 4.30 to 7.30, Thursday afternoon. Yeah. Okay. So if you are interested in further information, Motorwaker Library, 4.30, Thursday. All right, thank you very much. Thanks for um, people's time and attendance. And yeah, look forward to seeing submissions, uh, preferably straight to central government. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Cheers, Trinity. Cheers, Trinity.